Hi, it's Steph here. Welcome back to episode three of my ASP mini series, in which I aim to teach clinical pharmacists without prior infectious disease training on how to review antimicrobial therapy and incorporate antimicrobial stewardship strategies into their practice. In this episode, I'll teach you how to optimize your patient's duration of their antimicrobial therapy. And again, the focus will be on antibiotics because bacterial infection is by far the most common infections we see in hospital. The goal of the strategy is to ensure that your patient does not get a longer duration of antibiotics than is necessary to treat their infection. When I conduct my antimicrobial stewardship review, I too often see that patients' antibiotics get continued way longer than needed. When patients continue their antibiotics for longer than necessary, it increases their risk of experiencing adverse events such as C. difficile diarrhea. And it also selects for resistant organisms so that this antibiotic may not be effective if the patient ever needs it again in the future. There have been more studies in the recent years assessing a duration of treatment for treating infection. And many of them have found that shorter is better in terms of reducing side effects, reducing antimicrobial resistance, and with similar um, efficacy outcomes. The first thing to do when you're reviewing an antibiotic duration for your patient would be to look at the guidelines for the infection that you're treating. I'll link these guidelines below in the video description, uh, but I want to note three that I commonly use. The first reference I'll introduce you to is my Sanford's book. They also have a mobile app, as I mentioned in my previous episode. So if you look at the quick reference guide at the back cover of the book, you'll find that on page 77, so here, they have a table on the duration of therapy. On page 77, you'll see this table of the various common infections and the duration of therapy recommendations there. I'll also look through the IDSA guideline for the specific infection that we're treating to see if they have any recommendations. And lastly, in 2021, AMI Canada released a document outlining the duration of therapy for a list of common infections encountered in the community and hospitals, including urinary tract infections, pneumonia, as well as skin soft tissue infections. Because these guidelines are only updated every few years, I would also encourage you to do a quick literature search either in Google or PubMed just to make sure there's no new um, literature uh, giving further guidance. After getting a sense of what is recommended from these guidelines or literature, it is very important to look at how your patient is doing clinically. We always need to use our clinical judgment whenever we're applying guideline recommendations to our patients. You can work with your medical team when assessing the patient's clinical status. For example, um, the nurse will be a great help here just because they're uh, taking care of the patient and they have the best sense of uh, how the patient is doing. In particular, you want to pay attention to their hemodynamic status. Uh, is their blood pressure and heart rate stable? Uh, you want to see if they have defervest if they initially came in febrile. Uh, you want to check their oxygen status, for example, if they came in requiring a lot of oxygen to see if they're improving on their current course of treatment. A shorter course of antibiotic may be appropriate for a patient who is improving on their current therapy. For patients who are not improving that rapidly, they may need a longer than a suggested course. Therefore, again, this highlights the importance of working with your medical team when assessing the patient's status. For example, both IDSA and AMI Canada suggest that in patients with community-acquired pneumonia, a five-day course could be considered for patients who have been afebrile for the past 48 hours and have no more than one associated community-acquired pneumonia clinical instability. Lastly, you can always reach out to your antimicrobial stewardship pharmacist if you have any further questions or need guidance in reviewing your patient's antimicrobial therapy duration. We're always happy that our colleagues are helping us assess a patient's antibiotic therapy and stewarding on our behalf. I hope that I was able to give you some helpful tips on 
optimizing your patient's antibiotic therapy duration. Feel free to leave me a comment below if you have any questions regarding this topic. Remember to check the video description box below for links to some helpful resources. See you in the next video of this ASP mini-series. Till next time, bye! Thank you.